Hello, folks. Welcome back. We are still trying to find some limits, and we're trying to do it algebraically. Uh, so next up, we're talking about uh, this is one of those scenarios where you see a square root, but we can't just square the top and the bottom. I mean, I wish it were true. It would be a lot easier for me to teach uh, that I, if I wanted to cancel out these square roots, I could just square the top and the bottom. But I'm going to just take a simple fraction like two-thirds, and if I square it, it would become four-ninths. Is that an equivalent fraction? No, of course not. Those are not equal. Now, this does work if you take two-thirds and you multiply the top and the bottom by, let's say, four. So I would get eight over 12. Eight over 12 and, and um, two-thirds are exactly the same thing. So you're legal to multiply. It's legal to multiply the top and the bottom of a fraction by some the same thing. It's not legal to do that when it comes to squaring. You can't square the top and the bottom and get the same result. So what we do instead is we do this move called, oop, never not first, direct substitute. Plug in zero, zero plus one is one, square root of one is one, one minus one is zero. Plug in zero, okay, zero over zero, that means there's a hole. We've got this indeterminate form. We're gonna try to now eliminate where the hole is. And the way we get around it is this move called the conjugate. This is where I take the, um, the part with the root, part with the root, and I leave everything the same except for the sign in the middle. So the minus becomes a plus. Now, anytime you multiply a fraction, the top, you have to multiply the bottom by the same thing. So we start to distribute this. And I would get um, root x plus 1 times root x plus 1, which would then become x plus 1. Then this is where it gets interesting. When I multiply root x plus 1 times 1, and then I multiply one, negative 1 times root x plus 1, those are going to cancel out. They're going to add up to 0. But I still need to do negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1, over, I should write the limit. Now the denominator is a, is a mess. So I traded a root on the top for a root on the bottom, but this turns out to be a really nice trade. Because if you start to clean this up, you'll notice that plus 1 minus 1 cancels. Then, once I have that, I have x over x, which cancels. And then now I can take this 0 and I can direct substitute it. And we would get 1 over 0 plus 1 is 1, square root of 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. So, if you see a root and you want to clean up that root, multiply by the conjugate. You can't just uh, square it like you'd want, unfortunately. So over here, I'm going to encourage you to pause here and try to do this one on your own. So hopefully you did a direct substitute. 3 minus 3 is 0. That would be what? That's square root of 5. So square root of 5 minus square root of 5 is also 0. So we have a hole. We just got to figure out where that is located. So I'm going to multiply by the conjugate because I know I want to kill off these roots. So that's root x plus 2 plus root 5. This is root x plus 2 plus root 5. So I take whatever I want to square, and I just pretend like there's a, I switch the sign in the middle. Now we're going to start to distribute. If you remember over here, the denominator got all messed up and the numerator cleaned up. Over here, it's going to be the reverse because my denominator is where the roots were. So you must be precise here. x minus 3 is a quantity. The square root of x plus 2 plus the square root of 5 is a quantity over, and now I'm going to start to distribute. So root x plus 2 times root x plus 2, x plus 2. Root x plus 2 times positive root 5, and then I'm going to have a negative root 5 times x plus 2 that are going to add up to 0. And then a negative times a positive is a negative. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. What do you notice? If I clean this up, that turns out to be x minus 3, and so these guys are going to now cancel each other out, and we have eliminated the whole. So now I can direct substitute. So that would be 3 plus 2 is 5. So that would be root 3 plus 2 plus root 5. 
So that'd be root 5 plus root 5 is 2 roots of 5. What do you think? Hopefully that made sense. Now, I know we're only showing a couple of examples of each one of these, so you got to really make sure that you're dialed in when you're doing the homework because you don't get as much practice as we used to do back in, in pre-calculus. So here we go again. I'm going to never not first is to direct substitute. Uh, I don't like the way this is written, so I'm going to do a rewrite right off the bat. So this is 1 over 2 plus x minus 1 over 2 over x. Never not first. Plug in 0. That would be 1 half minus 1 half, which is 0. Plug in 0, which is 0. Means we have a hole. All right, so how do we clean up something like this? This is one of those where we want to kill off the complex fraction. Complex fraction is a fraction within the fraction. So we want to kill off the complex fraction part of this. So I'm going to multiply this by something that would cancel a 2 plus x and would cancel a 2 at the same time. So I'm going to times by 2 times the quantity 2 plus x, 2 times the quantity 2 plus x. Whatever you do to the top, you've got to do to the bottom. Now, when I distribute this in, this is over 1. So when I distribute, it's going to end up being on the top here. And once we get that, once this becomes 2 times 2 plus x, then the 2 plus x is going to reduce, and I'm left with just the limit as x approaches 0 of 2. Minus, okay, then when I distribute, this is going to be 2 times the quantity 2 plus x. This times the 2s are going to cancel out, and I'm left with 2 plus x. Error alert right here. Error alert. Error alert. Ding, 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 ding. Alert, alert, alert. Error, error, error. What was the error? Do you see it? If you don't, you got to keep your eyes peeled for it. If you didn't just weren't naturally drawn to it, you got to keep your eyes peeled. That means when I distribute, the 2's canceled. But this 2 plus x is getting subtracted, which means I need to distribute that negative in there. So this is actually going to become a minus over, and then when I distribute the bottom, I'm going to have 2x times 2 plus x, or I did not distribute, but just multiply. And you don't want to usually distribute the denominator because you're hoping stuff's going to cancel out. And you'll see pretty quickly that things do cancel out. So 2 minus 2 is gone. Now be careful, this is a negative x, cancels with that x there. And now we're left with negative 1 over 2 times 2 plus 0. I can now direct substitute. 2 plus 0 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And I get negative 1 fourth. All right, next one's all yours. You can do that. All right, let's see how you did. So this one's already written nicely. Never not first is direct substitute. 0. Uh, that would be 0, that would be negative 6, 1, 6, yep, that's 0. So now I'm going to multiply by the least common multiple of 6 and the quantity x minus 6. So I'm left with the limit as x approaches 0 of 6x times the quantity x minus 6 over, okay, when I distribute this in, this is over 1, so it'll end up on the top. The 6s would cancel, I've got x minus 6 left over. I would put the 6s would cancel, and I'd get plus 6. So this one wasn't tricky. We didn't have the, uh, didn't have the error alert that we had on, 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 the, on the part A. All right, let's see how things cancel here. So 6 minus 6 is gone. I can now kill off one of the x's. I can now direct substitute. So I would have 6 times the quantity 0 subtract 6, which ends up being 6 times negative 6, which ends up being negative 36. All right, so there's our how to handle fractions. Now, he calls this a sledgehammer. I've never heard of that. That's a really weird. Anyway, it's something that must, must work for his class. Um, to me, this is one that's just like you just follow your math voice. And I'm looking at this. I see this thing getting squared. My math voice says to clean that up. 
Now, where you could run into some problems, if I were to make a prediction as I was as I was watching my students take this test, I would be alarmed that they might try to do this. Now that is no, no, no. That is a no, 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 no. What do we do instead is we want to take that thing and we want to distribute it first. Now eventually you want to get to a spot where you can just memorize this. X plus H times X plus H. Okay, X times X is X squared. X times H and X times H add up to two XHs plus H squared. I'm going to call this a one, two, one. So as we go forward, you might hear me reference one, two, one. That's because the coefficients, whenever you expand the uh, uh, a binomial that's squared, it turns out that it's the first thing squared, it's the last thing squared, and then it's the two things multiplied together twice in the middle. So x times x is x squared, h times h is h squared, but then you've got an xh and another xh to give me the coefficients of 1, 2, 1, according to Pascal's triangle. So if I bring that back to my problem down here, I would have the limit as h approaches 0 of x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared all over h. Now at this point, some things should happen. Some things should cancel. And if you look, you'll see that the uh, x squared minus x squared cancels out. And I'm left with limit as h approaches 0 of 2xh plus h squared all over h. Well, what do you notice now? Everything has an H, so now I can kill one H here, one H there, and one H here. The limit as H approaches zero of 2X plus H, which we can now take the zero for H and plug that in, and we would get 2X plus zero, which is 2X. You might not remember this. Maybe you do. Hopefully you do. That's called the derivative. Okay, well, let's try this. Actually, I'm going to encourage you to try to do the next one. Oh, never not first, Stucky. Dang it. I forgot to plug in. Could we have just done this without showing any work? No, okay. Zero, x squared, x squared minus x squared is zero. H is zero. So that would be x squared. I'm going to try to, yeah, let's see. If I put 0 in for h, that would be x squared. If I put 0 in, that's minus 2x plus 1 minus x squared. you got to distribute the negative here, plus 2x minus 1. What is that? That all adds up to 0. Put 0 in there, okay. 0 over 0 means there's a hole. we just got to figure out where it is. So I'm going to encourage you to pause, see if you can clean this up. All right, I think I'm going to go with a nice, I'm running out of colors here. I need more colors. Let's go with purple. Okay, so we just expanded this. Limit as H approaches zero. We just expanded this. It was X squared. This is what we call a one, two, one. Distribute minus two X minus two H. Plus 1, distribute, minus x squared, plus 2x, minus 1, all over h. Let's see what cancels here. So I've got an x squared minus an x squared, minus 2x, plus 2x, plus 1, minus 1. So we're left with the limit as h approaches 0 of 2xh plus h squared minus 2h all over h. What do you notice everything as? An h. So I can kill 1h from each. And actually, I'm going to just plug it in this time. 2x plus h is 0 minus 2, 
which ends up being 2x minus 2. Those of you in physics might remember the derivative shortcut. This, x, th th this function would have been f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. The derivative shortcut would have taken us. Oh, man, hopefully you saw that. Takes us down to there. All right, now here's something brand new. We didn't talk about this in pre-calc. This is what uh, he calls this uh, Senor Salta, which is uh, Spanish for jump man. This is a new parent function. I'm going to call him jump man. I like, the, I like the sound of that. This is what we call jump man. Okay, so the reason that we call this jump man is because this is a function that's the jump function. When you've got an absolute x over a regular x or an x over the absolute x, we can. I'm going to break it down into um, a piecewise function. So f of x equals. So if I pick an x, let's go for all x that are greater than 0. So if I pick an x that's greater than 0, what's going to happen to this x on the top? Well, if I'm picking a number that's already positive and I plug it into this, it's going to end up being positive. Now, the second part is where it starts to get tricky. This is for all x's that are less than 0. Now, wait a minute. Why don't we include 0 anywhere? Well, what would we get if you put 0 into this thing? We get 0 over 0, which would be a whole, so we're ignoring that spot. So if I pick a number less than 0, I plug it in for x. That means that this thing is negative, but what do we get out? When you put it into an absolute value, you're supposed to get out a positive. So I'm going to call this piece negative x over x. And let me try to explain this again. If you put a positive in here, it's going to come out positive. Divided by a positive is just the same. The absolute values don't make one bit of difference if you plug in a positive value. Now, if I plug in a negative value, I want the top to be positive, but the bottom ends up being negative. Well, if this is a negative value, I have to have another negative with it to make it into a positive, and then the bottom is still negative. I have not yet come up with a great way to explain why that works the way it does, but it turns out this is the same. What's x divided by x is 1 for all x greater than 0, and negative 1 for all x less than 0. This is jump man. So whenever I see absolute something over something, the same thing without an absolute value, that thing's either going to be 1 or it's going to be negative 1. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so we're approaching 0 from the left. So which case applies here? This is jump man. I've got absolute x over x. So this is going to be the second case. That means that my limit's going to end up being negative 1. Because coming from the left side of 0, my graph is going to look just like negative 1. Let me sketch it to, to show you what I'm talking about here. So as I approach 0 from the left side, And then as I approach 0 from the right side, this is what jump man looks like. It's this, it's this piecewise function that's a, a horizontal line up at negative 1 and then a horizontal line up at 1. So what's the absolute value of x over x as we approach 0 from the right? Well, now I'm coming at it from the right side. I'm coming at it from the positive side. That's going to end up being 1. So if I have a left side limit that's negative 1, a right side limit that's 1, what does that mean for my overall limit? It does not exist. This is what we call a jump. Now, if we plug in a 3 in there, no problem. Plug in a 3, absolute value of 3 over 3. That's something we don't have to do jump man for. We can just plug in. Okay, let's see old jump man in action, or Senor Salta, as uh, Corpy calls it. All right, so these are all dead giveaways that they're going to be jump man because I've got an absolute value with a not absolute value. I just need to make them look like jump man looks. So in this case, what do you notice these both have in common? 
they obviously have a 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out that 2. as x approaches 5 from the left. Excuse me. So, I mean, you don't have to overthink this. You just got to memorize how jump man works. So jump man from the left is negative 1. Jump man from the right is positive 1. So this is going to be 2 times. And I guess I didn't really talk about this. Let me go back to this side. This works uh, when it's just x and x at 0. Because when we plug in 0, that's what's going to cause the problem. So if I have something like x minus 5, then I need to shift my limit over to 5. I mean, if this was still approaching 0, I could just direct substitute and I'd have an answer. Okay, so I'm approaching 5 from the left. That means I'm going to jump man with the negative side. And we get 2 times negative 1, negative 2. Let's try it for the next one. Here I am again, the limit of 2 absolute x minus 5 as x approaches 5 from the right over x minus 5. This is jump man again. This time I'm coming at it from the right-hand side, which is the positive side. So this is 2 times, um, this would be the positive 1 this time, and I would end up with a positive 2. Okay, so if you don't memorize this, there is another technique, and maybe you'll like this way better, I don't know. You get to decide. The other option is just to plug in something a little bit to the left, or plug in something a little bit to the right. So if I were looking at this one, let me grab a different color. Okay, here's option two. Plug in, what's a number a little bit to the left of five? Let's plug in four. Well, if I plug four into this, I get two times the quantity four minus 10 over 4 minus 5. Well, that's 8. Take away 10 over 4 minus 5. 8 take away 10 is negative 2. Wait, where did I mess up? Where did I? Wait a minute here. Hold on, I got to do some thinking. So I forgot that there's absolute values around these. There's an absolute plug in 4 with the absolute value. Plug in 4 with the absolute value. So absolute value, this would be, absolute value is 2 over negative 1, which ends up being negative 2. Let me show you again on this one. I'll show you another example. So what I want to do is I want to pick something to the right, because I'm coming from the right of 5. So I'm going to plug in 6. So that would be the absolute of 2 times 6 subtract 10 over 6 subtract 5. So 2 times 6 is 12. Tell, take away 10 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. 6 minus 5 is 1. Now you can only do this with jump man. But it turns out because those uh, the jump man part of this, this will always end up being either 1 or negative 1. That piece will always cancel out. So if you recognize jump man, you can also just test a point on either side of where your limit is approaching. Well, what's our overall limit then? Well, it should be D and E, right? I mean, this is jump man. This is the whole point of what we're trying to do here. Uh, this would be D and E. The whole point of this example is showing you that we can't, um, that we have a jump that we have a jump at wherever that x value is. All right, so here we are again. As soon as I see this, I recognize there's some jump man going on here. Now, I like to clean things up first. So that'd be the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left. And I would try to clean this up as much as possible. So like I'm going to take a 2 out of this, 2x squared absolute x plus 3 over 4 times the quantity x plus 3. Now, there's two ways to figure this out. You can plug in a number that's just a little bit to the left of negative 3, which isn't that big, in the, which would be what? Negative 4. Or you can do your jump man technique. I'm going to plug in, um, hang on. 
Yeah, I never know which way to do it. I guess I'll show you on, one way on each. So this is the way that I would do it. I would take negative 3, I would direct substitute it into here. And then I would times it by whichever jump man I have. So this is jump man coming from the left, so that would be a negative. So this ends up being what? Negative 9 squared is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 18 over 4 times a negative would be negative 18 over 4 which then cleans up to be negative 9 over 2. If you take a number like negative 4 and plug it into this, you should get this once it reduces. So here I am again. This time I'll just plug and chug, but i got to do some cleaning up first. You got to earn this. You don't just get it for free. So the limit as x approaches 6 from the right of, okay, now the top, my math voice is screaming factor. So this comes out to be x, what do we need, a 4, 4 and 3, no, 6 and 2, minus 6, minus 2, over, take out the 2, absolute, x minus 6. I see jump man. You see jump man? Jump man. Okay, this time I'm going to pick something just to the right. I'll write a little jump man there. Jump man. I'm going to pick something just to the right of 6, like the number 7, and I'm going to plug and chug. So when I plug 7 into this, I would get 7 minus 6 times the quantity 7 minus 2. I was already saying the answer was 5. Over 2 times the absolute of 7 minus 6. We clean this up. That would be 1 times 7 minus 2 is 5 over 2 times 7 minus 6, absolute 1. Where did I mess up? Oh, this is why jump man's a pain. Dang it. This is why I don't like to plug it in. So if you're going to plug it in, you can only plug it into the jump man piece of it. It won't work. No, it should still work, shouldn't it? All right, hold on a second. Let me think it through. So I've already changed my mind. I do not like this plugging in feature. I mean, you can, I just think it's a lot easier to just eliminate and memorize your jump man trick. So this is jump man. I know it's reciprocal, but it, the reciprocal of one is still one. So this is going to turn out to be, because I'm coming from the right, this is going to be a positive. So I'm going to plug 6 into this. So that would be, I guess I'll get a different color so we can see it a little bit better. So this was a jump man that came out to be positive. Positive jump man. Because I'm coming from the right side. So now I can plug in 6. So that would be 6 minus 2 over 2 times by 1. So that's 4 over 2 is 2. 2 times 1, which is 2. Now let's just double check this to make sure that I'm not crazy. So let's double check this on the uh, graphing calculator. So y equals, on top I have x squared, subtract 8x plus 12 over absolute 2x minus 12. Go to my table, I want to approach 6 from the right. And as we approach 6 from the right side, which is this side, what number are we getting closer and closer and closer? We're getting closer and closer to 2. So it does work. But you've just got to memorize how jump man works. You've got to notice that there's a jump man. And then remember that if it's coming from the right, it's 1. If it's coming from the left, it's going to be negative 1. So let's have you try this one on your own. See if you can break it up first. All right, let's see how you did. So I'm going to do the limit as x approaches 7 of sine x absolute, no, I'm going to take a 3 out of that, 3 sine x, x minus 7 over x plus 7, x minus 7. I see jump man. I see jump man. So right here, now, this is jump man. Oh, game over, man. Game over. This wants the overall limit. So what's the overall limit of jump man at 7? 
this would end up being DNA. So this whole thing is going to end up being DNA because this wanted the overall limit. So I don't care what this graph is doing because the DNA is going to blow it all up. It does not exist. Okay, let's prove it. Let's prove it just to make, just to make sure. So I'm going to actually, let's graph it this time and see what that looks like. So this is going to be sine of x times absolute x subtract 7 over x squared subtract 49. Uh, let's go a small window. We're going to go from negative, no, we're going to go from 4 until 10 maybe. Going by ones. I don't know how high that graph is going to get. Obviously higher than what our picture. Let's see what a zoom fit gives me. Boom. There it is. There's the jump. There's the jump. And we could do this with a table. Let's look at our table. We're approaching 7. This is probably the easiest way to tell. Are these approaching the same thing? Ooh, they kind of look like they're approaching 0, don't they? Well, I don't think so because it's some value in between those two. So there is a jump there. So anyway, you don't have to. If it's, a, if it's the limit approaching from both sides, it's over. Game over. Okay, I'm going to pause here and then let you... Get a couple more problems in the homework done, and we'll come back and finish up.